Hey guys, welcome back to our acid base unit. Today we're going to be talking about acid strength tables. Now, before I jump into this, I just want to let you guys know that you do have an acid strength table in those colored sheets you got at the beginning of the year. I think it's probably the second last one, Appendix 5.4, Relative Strengths of Acids. I'll be showing you an example of one later. The example I have is not the same as the one in your actual package. The one in your package is more, it's better. It's got more acids in it. That being said, if you don't have that page for whatever reason, if you just Google relative strength of acid or acid strength tables, you'll find tons of them. And as long as it has the acids on it that you need, you should be good to go. Anyway, acid strength tables. Let's go back to some basic acid theory here. When an acid or a base... Oh, that's not my marker. There it is. When an acid or a base mixes with water, it dissociates, right? It's an ionic compound. It's just going to fall apart into H plus or OH minus and whatever other ionic compound is with it. Now, what makes an acid or base strong is that it dissociates completely. Absolutely everything breaks down. If I've got hydrochloric acid, it goes fully to H plus and Cl minus. Or like 99.9%. .9%. Like there's probably going to be a tiny little bit of reverse reaction. But very, 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 very minimal, if at all. It's like complete dissociation for all intents and purposes. Now, you can test this by checking conductivity. So a lot of times people are like, well, how would you measure stuff like this? How do people even know? Well, these charged particles carry an electric current. They're called electrolytes. And so you can measure how much electricity will pass through a substance, and that'll let you know how much of it has fallen apart into ions. So an acid or base that does not completely dissociate, will not conduct electricity as well. It won't have as many charged particles around. And because it doesn't have as many ions, it doesn't have as much to carry electricity. So the more ions you got, the more you can carry electricity. We call those things electrolytes. So strong acids would be very conductive because they have lots of electrolytes. Weak acids and bases would not because they have less electrolytes. It doesn't have to be an acid. It can be a base too. So using an acid strength table you can figure out many properties of acid or base reactions. So this is an example of an acid base table right here. So you've got a different one in your, uh, in your handouts there, but any of them will basically work. Anything at the top left are your strongest acids. And if you're at the bottom left, these would be your weakest acids. And so you can see that it does not only gives you acid, it also gives you, well, this would actually probably say conjugate base. So if I take hydrogen iodide, for example, it's going to fall apart into hydrogen and its conjugate base, iodide. And those conjugate bases are really important because the stronger the acid, the weaker the conjugate base. So this means the top right, these here, would be your weakest bases. Oh, it's already labeled. Nice. So your weakest bases are kind of in this area. Whereas if you have a really weak acid, these down here are going to be your strongest bases. So hydroxide, obviously an exceptionally strong base. It's like the definition of a base. You've got the phosphate ion, an exceptionally strong base. The carbonate ion, a very strong base. The ammonium ion. That's not right. That shouldn't be the ammonium ion. There's a typo there. That should be ammonia. That should be NH3. There we go. Because you get rid of the H. Uh, H. Yeah, so they said all of these in blue, those are your bases. And so the very strongest ones are going to be kind of down in this area here. So bottom right is your strongest base. So for example, list the following from strongest acid to weakest acid. And so you've got, what do we got here? I got H2CO3. NH4, the iodide ion, and the sulfate, two ions. Okay, well, first thing to notice, two of these aren't even acids, right? This doesn't have a hydrogen in it, this doesn't have a hydrogen in it, and they're negatively charged. They're not going to be taking protons. Those are not acids. We know these two are for sure going at the end of the... Oh, what are we going? Strongest to weakest? Yeah, these are going at the end of the list. So I need to see what's stronger, carbonate or ammonium. So I take a look at my chart here. I start at the top and I start looking down. Can I find H2CO3 
There it is. There's carbonic acid. So that's the first one I run into. Oh, go the other way. So that's my first one. H2CO3 is strongest. Next, well, NH4 is the only other one that should be an acid, but we should find that down here. There's NH4. It's a little bit lower. So NH4, I went backwards again, is my next strongest acid. Now, I got to look at these two. I've got an I minus and an SO32 minus. Which of these is a stronger acid? Basically, you got to flip your thinking. I'm not looking at the strongest acid. I want to look for the weakest base. So because these are bases, I need to find which one is the worst base, I minus or SO32 minus. So I start over here on the base side, and I say the weakest bases are at the top. Oh, I minus is right there. It is a terrible base. So I minus would be the next most acidic because it's a really bad base. And what's my last one? SO32 minus. So I got to go find SO32 minus. There it is. SO32 minus is actually quite basic. And if it's basic, that means it's really not a good acid. It would be an exceptionally weak acid. It's not going to have any acidic properties really at all. So that would be your list from strongest to weakest. So to recap, you look down the acid list, write down any ones you find. Once you get to the bottom, you start up here and you look down the base list and you write them down in order. If you wanted to go the other way, weakest to strongest, you'd start down here. And you'd work your way all the way up through the bases first, because the bases would be your worst acids. Once you've gone through all the bases, you'd start at the weakest acids and then work your way up to the top. Anyway, when acids and bases react, they form an equilibrium, right? We know all this. You put like, let's do a basic here. I got HCl plus NaOH. It's going to form some kind of equilibrium. In this case, I'd have water plus sodium chloride. Cool. Now, knowing the position this equilibrium is at is very important. Does this reaction tend to favor products or does it tend to favor things staying as reactants? Basically saying, what is Kc for this reaction? And without being told Kc, you can actually predict it. And I mean, you can't get it down to like even what the exponent is, but you'll know Is it greater than or less than one? You'll be able to tell which side it favors just by looking at the strength of the acid and the strength of its conjugate base. So look at an example of this. Predict the equilibrium position in the reaction of hydrochloric acid plus ammonia, NH3. So step one, identify which substance will be the proton donor. Now, HCl and NH3 acid list. Uh, here's HCl. And what was the other one? I forgot already. NH3. All right. NH3. Oh, uh, that was the one that was, that was supposed to be here, is here. So which one is going to be more acidic? Well, very clearly hydrochloric acid is exceptionally close to the top of the strongest acids list. And NH3 isn't even an acid, it's on the base side. So we know for sure that the HCl is going to be the proton donor. It's the one that's gonna act like an acid. So in this case, HCl is stronger, it's the proton donor. So you write the reaction. HCl plus NH3 gives us, well, if I donate a proton away from the hydrochloric acid, I'm left with Cl minus, and I'm left with NH4 plus. All right, so now I've got my reaction written out. Step three, which ones are acids and bases? Okay, well, this is an acid. We just said that. This one acted like a base. It soaked up the proton, which means this used to be the acid. It gave away its hydrogen. So if we were to go backwards, it would soak up a hydrogen. That's the conjugate base which makes NH4 plus my conjugate acid. All right. Now, which acid is stronger, HCl or NH4 plus? So you look at your two acids, which acid is going to dissociate more? So again, let's take a look at our table here. Here's NH4 plus. 
here's HCl. What is stronger? Well, HCl, because it's farther up the list. So if HCl is stronger, it dissociates more, which means there's more ions around to react. Think about Le Chatelier's principle. If I'm putting a lot more of this around to react, which way does it shift? Well, it shifts away from that to try and use those things up. So because HCl is stronger, the equilibrium will point towards products. It would want to go this way because HCl is a stronger acid. So whatever acid stronger breaks down more, which means there's more stuff around to react. And because of Lichtenstein's principle, more stuff around is going to try and use it up. It'll shift away from the strongest acid. And that, I think, pretty much sums it up in terms of how to use your uh, acid strengths list. So again, you'll want to find those colored sheets. It's a really nice asset strengths list, actually. It's got a lot of things on it, better than that little one that I had in the notes there. But if you don't have it, don't worry. You'll be able to find one on Google for sure. So thanks for watching, and I will catch you guys next time.